We are back at 11 minutes after today's Stocks to Watch segment. Our next guest says he takes an economic look at companies when he's making his stock recommendations. Joining us, us to explain more about his methods and his favorite picks is Rafael Resendez. He's co-founder of independent research firm The Applied Finance Group, and he comes to us very, very early from Los Angeles. Rafael, good morning. Good morning. So talk to me a little bit more about your strategy. We'll get to your picks in a moment. You say while most research firms focus on next quarter's EPS, you take an economic look at companies. So how do you do that? That's right. What, what, the bottom line, basically, the way we look at firms is that earnings are a necessary piece of what drives their value. But if you look at the typical firm out there in corporate America, earnings comprise about 40% of the cash flow they generate in a given year. And if you go to the store, it's hard to go and buy your eggs with a dollar of earnings. At the end of the day, you really got to convert those earnings into cash because mm -hmm. cash is what cash is what we all deal with every day, and cash is what ultimately determines the value of firms. So we focus on understanding how much cash a company is generating, mm -hmm. and then we we look at how much they have to invest to generate that cash, so that we can evaluate how well management is putting our money to work. And that's one of the traits that we look at in every company we evaluate: how well is management running the business? And then what is that business worth? And that's what we'd like to talk about with some names this morning. In terms of giving it back, though, to investors, so you look at things that like what? Buybacks, acquisitions, CapEx spending, or all of that? You know, it's, it's, uh, that's an option that management has, certainly. When we look at, at, at uh, cash that management puts to work, it's how much have they invested on the balance sheet? How much have they taken from you, the investor? Mm -hmm. And what kind of yields are they generating on that investment? One option for firms and what we like to see with, with companies in particular, if they're not doing a good job running their business, right. is we like to see them return that money back to you, the investor, through buybacks, dividends, debt repurchases, and so on. And that certainly okay. is the motivation for a lot of these buyouts that have taken place, taking managements out that have not been doing a good job running their business. All right, seems like a pretty straightforward strategy. Let's talk about your picks, if we may. Uh, may. Your first one is MEMC Electronic Materials. Stock's up almost 60% this year. First of all, quick explanation of what the company does for those who might not be familiar, and why are we seeing such a great run in this name? Sure. Two, there's two unique things to this company that I think make it really interesting. One um, is they have tapped into what is becoming arguably the biggest trend of our time right now, this whole notion of alternative energy and global warming. Mm -hmm. As in addition to making their uh, silicon wafers for computer chips, they also make the silicon wafers used for solar panels. So their manufacturing facilities allow them to switch back and forth to meet demand requirements between these two markets and basically ride a trend of an industry that's growing 30% plus a year in the solar sector. And they've tapped into China as a big source of their, their product output, their, their destination for their product, which is probably the fastest growing region in the world for solar energy. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that's one unique aspect to the company. The other part that makes it really interesting at this point is that it's recently been added to the S&P 500. Right. So what we, what we have is we have a kind of a natural buyer base for this firm to create demand for the shares. You combine that with the fact that management has done a really nice job running the business over the last five years. Prior to 2002, this was really a, a terrible company to invest in. The management of this company back then was running the company into the ground. Mm -hmm. Starting in 2002, starting in the company really turned around and started to rationalize its products and rationalize the, its ability to invest and create excess returns. Right. And it's just been a stellar company since. Rafael, 20 seconds, though, I want to ask you, you know, this company's really been thriving on, you know, a very good tight supply demand equation. Do you expect that to continue? We do. We expect its markets to be strong. One of the things that, that makes this company interesting is that it deals in the area of... Uh, Polysilicon, that's one mm -hmm. of the key inputs to its products, it manufactures its own polysilicon. And given the shortage in the marketplace for that material right now, this firm's in a really nice spot to benefit from that increasing pricing pressure that's happening on all the suppliers of these products, whereas these folks are a little bit immune from those pressures. Giving them, we look at these guys to have a target price in the area of $74, given okay. us about 20% upside from today's price. Rafael, got about a minute left, and I want to get through this quickly if we can. Another one of your favorite stock picks is uh, PetSmart. I was just talking about it with Matt Miller. It's up about 13% this year. Short interest, though, is high on this stock. It's up about a, a, at a two-year high. Does that worry you at all? You know, it doesn't really worry me. I think the fundamentals for this company are really positive. The steps that, I, that these companies, that, that PetSmart's undertaking, and you folks touched on it earlier, is moving away from being a pure commodity supplier of pet goods to being a value-added service provider. And they, that's all good moves in your view? 
Absolutely. It increases margins, increases customer loyalty, increases the value of the brand to its customers. All right. At, at this point, at this point, we see about 25% upside on the stock. And you think can it withstand a, a downturn in the, in the economy? Is it kind of uh, resilient against uh, economic downturns? Just quickly. At, I, absolutely, yes. Pet, pet spending really is not discretionary. Once a pet becomes part of the family, it's built into the budget. Another nice factor in this company's favor, its biggest competitor, Petco, has gone private, right. meaning it's probably going to be harvesting cash, giving PetSmart the opportunity for really juicy growth opportunities in the future. And I will say I'm pretty good to my two dogs, so I guess uh, there, there's something to that. All right, Raphael, we got to run. Thanks for your time this morning. Raphael Resendez, uh, co-founder of the Applied Finance Group.